Welcome to the clinical podcast series brought to you by the American Academy of Optometry Foundation. The topic for today's episode is technical report, a new method for determining image distance for stand magnifiers. I am happy to be your host. I'm Joe Laborde and with me is Dr. Greg Hopkins as your topical editor and expert. And now over to our podcast. Welcome to this episode of the clinical podcast series brought to you by the American Academy of Optometry Foundation. Today, I'm with our topical expert and editor for today's episode, Dr. Greg Hopkins. Welcome. Thanks, Joe. It's good to be here again. It's great to have you again. Greg is from the Ohio State University College of Optometry, and today's topic is Technical Report, a new method for determining image distance for stand magnifiers. So here we go. Uh, Dr. Hopkins, it seems like low vision optics is is pretty complex. So how do you handle that? Well, it can be a challenge, Joe. Um, Things are confounded in this um, decision space of what magnifier to choose for a given patient because you know, we have different conventions of X power labeled on our devices. Um, uh, and when we try to give someone a stand magnifier, um, it's gonna project out an image that's enlarged for the patient um, uh, and it'll be at a certain viewing distance. And unfortunately, um, we don't often know um, a priori what, that, what those parameters are when the magnifier is put onto the market. Okay, so how, how do low vision doctors then know the strength of their magnifiers? Well, we, we have to figure it out ourselves. Um, so many of us do uh, resort, uh, we talk amongst other experts and resort to creating our own lookup and reference tables individually. So each time something comes out, um, we, we practically have to set up an optical bench or, or build our own lensometer because as you can imagine, these big magnifying glasses, they don't fit on the, the lensometer that we use for, um, for measuring people's spectacles. So, uh, so it's that or resort to um, uh, pr- setting up some sort of um, photo editing software, take a reference picture of a grid and then compare it to the a picture that comes out of the magnifier and count the number of pixels per millimeter and convert things. So it gets pretty complex and this technical report um, was a way to kind of give another method that uh, might be a little bit more accessible to the general practitioner, because there's been many ways that people have gone about this problem over the years. Why can't the magnifiers just be put on the lensometer to get their strength? Well, yeah, as I I guess I kind of led into that question already, um, there can be a difference between um, the surface power of the lens and then its true strength, or we call that the equivalent power of the lens. Um, and so uh, one way to get around that is we, we can set up um, uh, sort of an image that's about a foot tall, uh, 10 feet away, and we can send that through the lens and see what comes out the other side. And if you measure that upside down real image um, with a contact lens reticule, it's got a scale on it, it will be um, the, the same number as the focal length, you just got to shift the decimal point over. So if it sounds annoying and complex to do, I mean, that's because it is. Um, I wish we could just simply put it on an auto lensometer, have it come out properly, or trust the manufacturers um, to label the dioptric power of the lens accurately and within ANSI standards. Um, But once we know the strength of that lens, then we need to know where is the image that it's generating. And and so so my um, co-authors, Dr. Dr. Leverens was the the lead author on this paper, and then I I had um, Dr. Hansen uh, help verify some of these image distances as well. Um, The three of us kind of each tried to do this in our separate offices and um, see if we would get similar results within about an eighth of the diopter. So uh, what we did was we just kind of measured the distance from the stop uh, from the top of our um, our, our show our, our desk uh, to the ceiling. And then from there, um, we would know uh, what diopters it would take to focus a picture on uh, on the ceiling. And so it's actually kind of fun uh, to go about it this way. And um, as a matter of fact, more accurate than um, some of the other measurements, which are done from the front surface of the lens. 
Okay, so then tell me why why don't manufacturers just labor their devices properly? That's a very good question, Joe, and I hope that we can get more doctors practicing low vision, and as a result, we'll have um, you know a little bit better um, voice to to sort of say we demand uh, well crafted tools for this trade, and we want to have the confidence, um, you know, collectively. Uh, to just take a common sense approach to helping our patients to read comfortably. Because right now um, we have X powers that are uh, labeled on the devices that are misleading and, uh, and the image distances, if they're printed at all on um, the, the, the device, they, they don't tell you where the picture is coming from. They just tell you how close they think you should put your eye to the surface of the lens, but they're mm -hmm. assuming that they know your bifocal strength, which is a big assumption. So we just were given the raw information, um, how big's the picture and where is it at? I think the rest of us optometrists can put them in focus. That's what we do all the time. Wow. So thank you so much for joining us today on this podcast, Dr. Hopkins. We hope to have you on another one very soon. Well, that's my pleasure always, Joe. Take care. Take care. And a special thanks to Cooper Vision for their educational grant to make it all happen.